How's everybody doing tonight? So, for tonight, one of the things that during the quarantine, some people have even battled. Um, it's not just in the quarantine. There's been a battle with the inner side for a long time for some people. One of the things, you know, that occurs for some people is there's a, there's a huge worry for things. And meaning you, let's say for example, you're going through something tough. A family member is going is in the hospital. And, you know, at first it starts off with a little worry. You know, they're going to the hospital. You know, it can be a lot of different things. And then all of a sudden it starts to pick up in this person's mind. And this worry just starts to grow and to grow and to grow. And see, the thing is that for some people, that worry, you know, they can start thinking positive. They can start um, just trying to block it out. But then there's other people that deal with this anxiety, this worry that it's so huge, it begins to affect their life. Um, they can be at work. They can be at home. They can be around friends. It is something that happens pretty often it's just it's hard to sometimes battle it i mean everybody's different everybody does their own thing to try to work out with their life but sometimes for some people anxiety can really break them down and let's put this for an example for the people that don't understand if you ever have an anxiety it's something that can just it basically puts you down per se paralyzes you so imagine that and this is a really extreme scenario but imagine that you have somebody that you love dearly either a friend family member your own child anybody and they're extremely hurt and you're the surgeon and then you have to do what, anything possible to keep them alive like again like i said this is an extreme scenario but you're the one that has to control if they're going to make it alive or not. You have everything on your hands that, you know, you're thinking of scenarios. What if I do this wrong? What happens if this happens? What happens if it doesn't go right? Just thoughts start playing in your head. And this is one type of, of an anxiety that people have. Well, it can start paralyzing your mind. It can start paralyzing your body. You can be at work and your mind is just gone you're supposed to be focusing on something and you have a hard time to focus going back to that scenario you know you're thinking about this person that you love dearly you don't want nothing to happen and all of a sudden you block you freeze you're stuck you don't know what to do because everything you're doing is not working right it almost feels like the whole world is crumbling upon you and what do you do at that moment a person that deals with anxiety can get told different things it will get better um, they can get told, don't worry about it. You know, they try to even go as far as going out with friends, going to do things to distract their mind. And sometimes it doesn't work. It's very hard for some people to just be able to say, you know, this is what I'm dealing with and it can get better. So for the people that don't understand it, you know, one of the biggest things you can do for somebody is letting them know that you are there. It's that having that support that somebody's there, even if you don't understand. Because at that moment, you don't know what to do. You can give them all the positive um, explanations, all the positive reasonings, and sometimes it's still tough for them to process because in their head, there's something that is now allowing it to. So there's some people that have a social anxiety. Social anxiety is also pretty tough too deal with that you can be in a small crowd you're perfectly fine you can be in a huge crowd and start worrying or you can be about sp around specific people it can be one or two friends that you are perfectly fine with but all of a sudden that you get put in a situation where you only know one person and everybody else you don't even know and you start to worry because there's different things that maybe start playing in your head am i going to be liked um what are they thinking about me you know why are people looking at me? Did, will I say something that will embarrass me? 
certain things like that start popping into the person's head. And they begin to get very nervous and begin to shut down. And it's very, very difficult to deal with that. And it's hard to just be able to say, you know, stop. You can't turn it off in a matter of seconds and say everything's going to be okay. I know a few people that when I've been around them and I can sense it, that they're just not comfortable. And you can tell by sometimes, you know, that the way they speak, um, their body emotions, like the way that they're moving, it can even be that, you know, they just, they don't look okay. It looks like something is wrong. And what I mean that it's just like you have this vibe, you can tell that something is bothering them. But again, you don't want to make that person feel uncomfortable. It's already bad enough that they're dealing with this and they don't know how to make it better. Now, for the people that are dealing with it, you know, I know that in whatever situation that you might be going through, it is hard. It's not something that you can just push away. One of the things that's worked for me is continually, you know, there's an overthinking of process. You know, you're thinking of something that's just, you know, bad thing, bad thing over a bad thing. And it's just trying to eliminate one of those. You start having this bad scenario out, playing in your head. And it's very, very hard to just say, you know, that it's going to get better. But you just try to push it. You just try to keep on going and telling yourself, you know, Whatever was going wrong, just have a positive thought. Okay, let's say you're at work. It, it happens with people when they mess something up at work. It can be something simple and anybody else can be just like, it's nothing. It's not a big deal. But to about one specific person, it's a huge deal just to mess up one time. So when those scenarios start coming up to your head, like, man, what is the boss going to think of me? Or, you know, they start like, dang, did if I did that wrong, how many other things that I did wrong today? You know, just try to let it go for a little bit and think of how many things you did right. Make yourself remember of the things that you did good. Now, in a place where people have a social anxiety, that one's a little bit tougher. Because for me, I know that I can be in a huge crowd that I'm not comfortable with. And I can, one of the easiest things is hands start to get sweaty. Um... I start to get very nervous. I might start to get shaky. My voice starts to get shaky. So one of the things I have to do, and it's been very hard, and it's just come up to somebody and try to talk to them. You know, it's overcoming those those hard obstacles. And people will say, well, how do you do that when it's something that, you know, talking to somebody that I don't know, I don't know what to say, what to do. And that's very true. But the same way as when we were growing up, you know, there's some people that, you know, you just didn't know and you just try to find something in common and you just try to talk and say, hi, you know, how are you doing? Start with something simple. Those are some of the things that help. And then after that, you know, you just get a sense. But never forget, though, that even if that person just you didn't click with them, um, they didn't understand everything you were saying as far as like they just weren't vibing correctly with you, it's perfectly okay doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. doesn't mean that they're going to judge you. And even if they do judge you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they do. Because of the fact that you're special. You have a unique purpose in life. You have a reasoning for the things you do. And you have a purpose in your life. So, with all that being said, I know it's still going to be hard when you're dealing with anxiety. And there's going to be some people that don't understand. Now, let's say you're and one of the hardest parts is being in a relationship with one person doesn't understand of the other person that's constantly dealing with anxiety. See, what happens a lot of times with, um, actually I shouldn't say a lot of times, many times when it happens with people that deal with anxiety is it starts to freeze them up. So all of a sudden this worry comes right into their head and it continues to play over and over and over to the point that. They don't want to do nothing. And I'll give you an example. Well, let's say that they get a phone call. And, you know, 
a phone call saying that they have to come into work and they have the kids. And at this moment, there's no babysitter. And it's the last minute and they don't know what to do. So they start to freak out. They begin to not understand what is the way I have to go move on next. And it is tough. You know, you have your kids, you're having to try to figure all this out. And at this moment, for some people, they're like, you know, that's no big deal. I know who to call and what to do. And that's fine. But everybody is different. You know, everybody's life is in a different situation. So at that moment, these people begin to actually create scenarios in their head where they're trying to figure out how to do these things. And eventually it just feels like everything is starting to compress. Their body starts to tighten up. Emotionally, they start to basically break down. And in some cases, when they go through all this, they just freeze. It feels like you're paralyzed, like you can't move, that you can't do nothing. But at that moment, if you're somebody that knows that go through this, you know, understanding that those factors that happen, those are the moments that you want to still be there and say, how can I help you? How can I make it easier for you? I understand that you're going through a lot right now. What can I do? Or giving them a supporting side of saying, hey, everything's going to be okay. You know, we'll get through it. Don't let that person feel like there is nothing that they can do and there's nobody to help out. The worst thing to ever do to somebody like that is to tell them you're over exaggerating. You are, you know, there's nothing that you should be worried about. You know, yeah, there's nothing they should be worried about. But at that moment, that's not what they want to hear. And that's not the time to tell somebody don't worry about those things. At that time, it's a time to give them comfort, to give them support, to make them feel like it's going to be okay. Not to make them feel like what they are feeling at that exact moment is bad. It's already bad enough that they know that they're dealing with that. They don't want that. They don't want to deal with anxiety. So what do you, where do you go from there? For the person that's actually dealing with this, that is the one hardest moment because I know that when somebody tells you, hey, you know, get over it. Sometimes people get emotional. They start crying. That is all perfectly fine. Don't allow yourself to think that that there is something wrong with you. Just because you go through anxiety, really, it's just something that in your mind we're dealing with. But there is nothing physically that's wrong in the saying that, you know, there's an issue with you. So don't ever feel like there's an issue with you with that. Instead, be proud of yourself that you are still moving on in life. That you actually have an opportunity to try to figure it out. It's going to be hard. It's going to be very difficult. It is sometimes having to get out of your comfort zone and that may be one of the toughest things. But don't don't set yourself aside thinking that whatever anybody tells you that, you know, don't worry about it, that you're over exaggerating. No, it is your way to battle what you are facing at that exact moment and you can overcome it. And some of you have overcame a lot in your life. It just took a couple extra steps which is perfectly fine. Not everybody's going to go the same route. Not everybody's going to do the exact same thing to to lead to that whatever goal that you're facing, you know, if it's something at work that, you know, you did wrong and you could have did it a different way, you know, that's something you constantly play with and overplay in your head as you get home, you're still thinking like I did this wrong, how could I have done better? What do I do next time? And there's different scenarios start playing in your head. Whereas somebody else, they may just not even worry about it. They'll be like, okay, just try better next time. In that moment, it doesn't matter. You're either way, both of those people are going to try to get into a better direction. And one might take a couple extra steps because they're not going to want to feel that type of worry again. They don't want to feel either disappointed with something that they did. They don't want to feel like a failure. And one of the biggest things that will tell you is you are not a failure. I was taught that when you fail, it's your first attempt in learning. And if you fail multiple times, it's following attempts in learning. So in all reality, it's perfectly okay to fail. It's how you're going to learn. It's how you're going to do better. So don't ever feel like whatever you're dealing with is not going to be able to be overcame. 
the anxiety that we feel, it's sometimes part of our nature to actually increase just the way that we're going to do things just kind of gives us like our animal instinct per se to react in a way that we're going to overcome and fight that obstacle that's in our way. And I know that there are some people that they even have anxiety from like um, a post-traumatic um, issue that happens, situation that occurs in their life. And to be honest, that is one of the most hard and terrifying ones because if there's something that was very traumatic to happen in your life, of course you're going to have a really difficult anxiety to deal with. And that is something where people will try to tell you, you know, like, hey, whatever you're feeling like, just get over it. And it doesn't work that way. But at the same time, it is a battle that you will continually face and continually go on. That maybe over time, it's not going to go away, but it will get a little bit better. There's a continuous of having to figure out the matters of how you get into at least a little bit of a better situation. So you don't have to have such a huge anxiety. That one is a tough one, especially with PTSD. Now, what I have noticed from experiences and from other people that I've talked to of how they deal with things. So if you ever have a very difficult situation in your life that makes you get in this situation again and you begin to panic and that is where it begins that you start having this panic attack and the people that don't understand is you see at that moment you start to worry about something because you remember you have this memory of something in the past that happened and now it is occurring again but this time you already know the last time you might have not known what could happen this time you do or you start to even feel like it's going to happen again the same way at that moment your body starts to freeze up in some cases um there's some people that become very emotional there is that's where you, some people begin to get very shaky and when that happens i'll say trying to clear your head is Probably one of the best, but probably one of the hardest. There is a lot of having to, depending on your situation, it is figuring out if you can. In that situation, can you block out certain things? Can you just let it go on a little bit more? And there's another situations where you can't. You can't just try to see what's going to happen. And it's almost leaving that scenario completely alone, just going out of that way. Um, and I say this, for instance, um, it's very sad, but it happens to people where they were sexually abused and all of a sudden they're in this scenario where it feels like the same thing that happened before is going to happen again. So they begin to get worried in their head. There's scenarios that start to play out. They start getting anxiety. They start shortening their breaths, and not on purpose. It just starts to happen. And at that moment, you know, there's nothing in their wrong. They're doing this by nature because of what happened in their past. That right there is one of the hardest ones. Because if you're in a situation where you can't just leave, you know, what do you do? If you're in your own house and there's somebody that came in that you don't trust because of something that happened in your past, you know, you can try to lock yourself up in your room that they won't come in. Um, if you have the ability to leave, you know, if you're at a place where it's a public area, trying to find somebody to help you to get to your car safely, or just find a way, somebody that can help you make sure that you get home safely, you know, because those are the situations where that anxiety really kicks in bad. And I have seen people where they freak out with that because that is something that's very traumatic. But to tell somebody like, get over it in those moments you're really making it a lot worse because they feel like the person they could trust at that moment if it's you that you let them down that they put their trust for what they're dealing with in your hands and you crushed them they felt like whatever they could say 
now it doesn't matter to anybody. And it's harder to explain that to somebody else because they're like, the one person I trusted doesn't understand and they think that it's a joke, that it's a game. In reality, it's not. But they pass it on and just throw it away like it's nothing. And, you know, that is something that for the people that deal with it, just know who the people you can trust with what you're dealing with. And and for some people, there's even ones that you already know, like there's a friend, there's a family member that you can even talk to when you're starting to go through anxiety. Um, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to those people. Um, if you have somebody like that, you know, that is wonderful. If you don't, you know, there's possibly somebody that you're in good contact with that you can trust with that. Maybe they have a small understanding or they even knowing that you have that, they can try to help you out. There's always some, There's always myself that I'm always there for anybody that's ever dealing with it. They just need someone to, like, to talk to, to try to get them through it because that's not easy. Um, there's also resources that I have as well to help you just kind of get you going, kind of at least bring you back in track to letting you relax for a bit. Because one of the last things you want to do it's to let that continue to go and to go and it brings you down to a part where you don't maybe not want to leave your house for a day and that happens for some people they don't want to leave the house they don't want to leave their bedroom they're just stuck in this moment because everything in their mind basically shut down and the only thing that's playing over and over in their head is that worry that they have and whatever it may be that happens in public for instance, that may happen for a person that is about to give a speech. If you see somebody that goes in that, it's not something that, you know, they can just ignore. Now, I've been public speaking myself, and I also still get anxiety from just going up and speaking. But it's something that I've had to work really hard, and it's taken many years to overcome. And I still feel that worry. But it's not as much as it used to be. There's some people that they can't do that. They can't even be in, you know, in a family get together and stand up in front of everybody and speak, have everybody silent and speak about something that they want to talk about. So don't think that whatever you're facing, you know, is not going to be something you can overcome. You know, it is over time. It can. It may not go away. I'll be honest. In, in some cases, it doesn't. But it is something that you can work towards and it just brings it down a level. And that helps out extremely, especially if it's something that, you know, it brings you down and you don't want to leave the house. Maybe what happens is that something in your mind happens so bad that this anxiety kicks you down. And the next thing you know is that you're supposed to go meet up with a friend and you forgot and you're stuck on that living room couch just watching a movie because you really don't want to talk to nobody. You know, and that's perfectly fine. But it'd be a little bit better if at least you're able to move around, just go somewhere, just maybe take a ride or listen to music, something to clear your mind a little bit. So there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, there's uh, so many ways that you can try to see and implement into your life to see if they actually work. Because not everything is going to work and not for everyone's going to be the exact same way. I know that um, one of the things that I see now more often is a lot of these kids have anxiety, but people ignore it. Instead, they make fun of them. And that's always kind of where I go back to is a lot of the things I talk about is always reflecting back to kids. Because, yeah, us as an adults, we see this. And, you know, when we see another adult, you know, it's just, it's a one or take for me. When I see somebody that starts getting anxiety, I feel really bad, not in a sympathetic way that I'm like, oh, you know, what can I do and stuff like that. It's just more of like, you know, I want to cheer them up. I want to make sure that they're okay. I don't want to make them feel like they're incapable of anything. I want them to feel like they can trust me enough just to be them. It's emotional way. It's perfectly fine. You know, there's nothing you want to hold up, hold up against them. But as kids, when there's kids that 
have a worry, you know, that's something where a lot of times we see a kid that's stuck in the room and there's some kids that just enjoy playing video games all the time and stuff like that. But then you have some kids where they don't want to do nothing. They just want to be locked in the room because they're dealing with something and they're using that video game to express it. Is it the best way? Possibly not. In some cases, yes, because that's their way of relieving to what happens is they're getting their mind out of the physical world into a virtual world. They want to escape. They don't want to feel that worry no more. And it's crazy, but a lot of this actually revolves into a lot of other things. And that's the thing. I'm not saying that everybody that you see, you know, that's worrying is having anxiety. No, that's not the case. You know, you can't always tell. And that's another difficult one because one of the things that we sometimes hear from kids and even adults is, how was your day? Oh, it was okay. Well, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good. Get that simple short answers. It's not the simple short answers. It's that sometimes they battle such a hard, difficult moment of anxiety. And it's easier for them to say, it's okay to you. Or tell you, I'm okay, I'm, it's good. And they don't express what's going on. But deep inside, they are dealing with anxiety so bad that maybe they don't really want you there. They don't really want to be in that location. You know, and that's the thing. How do you know? Well, just always letting them know that, hey, I'm here for you. If you ever need to talk or anything, are you sure you're okay? You know, don't kind of give it in that sense. But like, hey, you know, just okay. You know, anything else happened? Or I feel like it's good. So you had a good day? Yeah. Try to talk to them, especially kids. Try to have them talk, express themselves, communicate with them. Let them relieve themselves because in that sense, there may be something that they've been worried about and that's bothering them. Maybe homework, um, you know, as young kids, they're teenagers, they may be dating, something like that. There is something that maybe might be bothering them. In not all cases, there's sometimes where, yeah, there's just an okay day and they're good. But you don't want to pry either. And that's a difficult, there's a balance there. You have to understand how far you're going to ask because you don't want to push too much and that in a sense they feel like you're only prying all the time and that's the same thing with an adult you know and some people they don't want to talk about it and it's okay just letting them know like hey well i just want to extend out you know my care and that if you ever want to talk if you ever want to vent you know i'm here i've always listened out to you and i'm always going to be no matter what you know some of those things it's just something They'll stay in their head. They might not use it today. They might not use it next week or next month. Maybe three months down the line, they're dealing with something and they already remember. Like, oh man, I do remember that so-and-so told me that it was okay for me to message him. And next thing you know, you get a message. Like, hey, do you mind talk real quick? Or hey, do you mind we go hang out real quick? Something simple like that. And... That's something that I have noticed in some people that they take to a huge appreciation because it's hard to know who you can tell these certain things, especially with the way that society is, you know, there's a toss up on who you can trust and who's not going to make fun of you. I know that, you know, that's a whole nother subject, a whole nother topic, but that is something that some people would really worry about. Like, who can I trust? Who can I talk to without being made fun of? Because they already know that they've been dealing with it. And the last thing they want is somebody that's going to make them feel worse than they already are. I know that, you know, put this out there because for me, it was, it's difficult to just talk about anything that I'm dealing with. There's certain people that I can tell. There's others that there's so much I can tell. And there's other ones I just can't because it's not that I have anything against them. It's just inside me. It's hard. But it is, as long as there's at least one person that you can fully trust, that's perfectly okay. And they don't have to understand to 100% what anxiety is or you know what you're dealing with. It's just them allowing you to speak and vent. And in return, they're being supportive. They're being someone that's going to try to uplift you, try to be someone that's just going to like, 
guide you. And people might say, well, you know, you're an adult, like deal with it by yourself. Okay. For some people, that's easy. For the others, it's not. And if it is easy for you, that's great. That's wonderful that you've been having, that you've been able to battle those moments that are hard for you and get through them. That's really, really good. And actually, I'm proud of you for it. And for the people that haven't, don't feel any less. Because for those people that can't deal with it all the time, understand that it's there's things in our lives that maybe we just need to be, you know, shifted slightly to see. Or in the more sense like this, it's almost like having a very foggy window. And we just need someone just to clear it up a little bit for us to be able to recognize that we can clear up the rest and see what's out there to actually help us out. That is one of the easiest ways to allow somebody help you out if they are going to positively help you out. If they're going to make it negative and make it worse, unfortunately, that's not somebody at that moment that you want to have them to help you out. Because if anything, they'll make it worse. And you don't want that. And if you're that person that's going to be negative, and more, more than anything, it's better just to keep quiet. Because if there's nothing that's nice that's going to come out into that person that they already have a lot of worries to, it's best to not say anything. Because you're just going to make those matters worse. And you really don't want that. You don't want that person to feel so hurt that instead they block you out of a lot of the things. There's some people that shut out the world. And I mean that they'll be talking and all of a sudden they just don't want to speak to nobody for days. Some for weeks. They don't, you don't see a text message. You know, just simply replying out to them or, I mean, messaging out or calling up like, hey, I'm just checking up, making sure you're okay. Letting them know. Again, just being that supportive. Be always staying positive. And don't be like, well, you haven't messaged in a while. Like, okay, whatever. I see that you only want a message when you need something. Like, don't do that. Because you're already making them feel like wherever they're at in that position of life, it's hard. And by making them feel like, like, okay, now I don't have anybody to reach to. Maybe you were that only person for them. It doesn't matter if that person knows the entire world. Maybe there's only one person that they fully feel comfortable with. So I know that there is a huge topic with anxiety this doesn't cover it all. I am no doctor. I'm no counselor with this. This is just something that I just want to bring out to people just to be able to recognize, to be able to know what happens. And for the people that deal with it, you know, just don't let it bring you down all the time of, of saying like, you know, I have anxiety and I hate it. Yeah, a lot of people do. But don't let that discourage you. Understand that it's just your fighting mechanism to actually just push you further in life and do a little bit better. So continue to try to push and that if you need to reach out to anybody, reach out to someone you really trust. You need to reach out to me. That is perfectly fine. If there's just the resources that you just need, you know, ask. Don't be afraid to ever ask. Because if you don't ask, you won't ever know. And some of those things is just as simple as that, just to ask for somebody to be able to help you and guide you. So I hope you have a good night. I hope that if you are one of the people that is currently going through a situation that you are going and feeling anxiety, I really hope that you're able to see that it's going to be okay and that you're able to overcome whatever it is and everything will be okay. Keep a positive mindset. And again, I am always here if you want to ever just vent out or just let somebody see a different scenario. Another positive way when we black out, in a sense, have writer's block by having an emotional mindset from anxiety. So again, I hope you have a wonderful night and I hope things get better for you.